Um, so my next question is, I see that you're quite, you know, looking at your biography that you get your first property, you know, doing a cash, cash, um, cash advance, you know, you did that, but you kind of got stuck. Um, and that's how you let you, you had a partnership which helped you scale to a hundred. So can you talk about that a little bit more? Uh, yeah, I, I, um, you know, built up a small portfolio by myself, just kind of raising some private money and then, um, you know, followed some, some new business opportunities, ended up selling that portfolio, kind of went broke or definitely went broke in 2012 and uh, got out of these other businesses that I was pursuing in order to focus on real estate again, full time. And uh, there's some people who reached out to me um, that I met through business and they said, Hey man, you know, you have uh, the knowledge and the skill set and the insights on investing in real estate. We have money. How about we just put some money with you? And they ended up, uh, ex I ended up exclusively partnering with these couple of guys and, um, uh, they put up a few hundred thousand dollars, which was actually, uh, you could do some damage with that because I moved back to Cleveland, Ohio, where you could buy houses for 10, 20, $30,000 back at the bottom of the market. And, uh, and we ended up, you know, going into business together and I started building a portfolio and a little over a hundred doors um, and, and just buying single family houses, flipping single family houses, buying duplexes for rentals, triplexes for rentals, got in my first eight unit apartment building. And, uh, and I really like the scale that apartment buildings offered. So really went deep into, into that, stopped doing everything else just to focus on apartments. And again, built that portfolio up to about 140 doors. And, um, and then that partnership ended up going south. A lot of partnerships, uh, when they're exclusive partnerships, um, uh, you know, life happens, right? You can make money, you could lose money. Uh, somebody could get married, somebody could have a kid, somebody could uh, have other business ventures, other opportunities, things that can that change and, uh, and happen. And so I don't, I don't really like exclusive partnerships. The only person I want to be married to is my wife. That's it. But I like joint venturing on a deal by deal basis with other people. And if we like doing business together, we can continue to do business together. But what happened when I got married to those guys, you know, by uh, uh, having an exclusive relationship, an exclusive partnership with them, is when we decided to break up and, and go our separate ways, we had to liquidate our entire portfolio. So I had to press the reset button again and start from scratch again in 2015, 2016. But I had the experience, right? I had the knowledge. I had some of the resources and connections that I had built up. So I was able to get my feet back under me pretty quickly uh, thereafter. I was able to grow the portfolio pretty rapidly uh, with the amount of experience and, and uh, background that I had developed. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, um, wow. So being the fact that you lost, you know, um, lost twice in your, in your early careers from 2008 to 2016, what would you say is some key things you learned, you know, doing that space of losing what? Yeah, I think um, focus would be one, right? Don't chase shiny objects. Uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there right now. People are talking about cryptocurrency and people talking about e-commerce stores and people talking about real estate. People are talking about, uh, I mean, I, I have buddies who sell baseball cards and make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month off of selling and flipping baseball cards and, and basketball cards, right? And, um, you know, there's people who flip vehicles, cars and trucks, and, and there's such a shortage of vehicles right now that people are making a lot of money in that business. There's a lot of different opportunities out there. Um, find one, right? Like you cannot become an expert unless you dedicate 10,000 hours to one thing. And when I see people jumping from, and, and, and so break that down, 10,000 hours, on a 40 hour work week is essentially 2000 hours per year, which means it takes five years to become an expert at anything. And wow. when you see people, you know, who are in their twenties and thirties who jump around from job to job or opportunity to opportunity every two to three years, that tells you that they're not becoming an expert at anything. Right. And they think things are going to happen sooner than they actually will. But really, it takes a couple of years of planting seeds. It takes a couple of years of cultivating those seeds before you actually get that harvest and you're able to then consume in year five and beyond. So you got to go out and just become an expert. As Once you become an expert in something, then you can say, hey, let me automate this business. It's easy. It's simple. It's on autopilot. And then you can look at opportunity number two or deal number two. Or if you're really good at building out a team, then maybe you can... Um, 
uh, put the right team in place and then go focus. But I, I, you, all the most successful people I know dedicate minimum five to seven years to any business venture that they're going to get into. If they don't, if they're not going to do it for five to seven years, they typically don't do that business. They don't start that business. They don't pursue that opportunity. So I know everybody wants that short-term capital, that short-term money. Uh, the reality is you're going to, you're going to overestimate what you can accomplish in 12 months, right? Like we all have big goals, but it takes longer than 12 months to achieve those goals. I will say this though, you will grossly underestimate what you can accomplish in three to five years. You know, you might say, Hey, I want hundred doors in three to five years. You might hit 500, you might hit a thousand, you might hit 1500, uh, rental units in three to five years. Uh, you know, I mean, I've started building my portfolio in 2000, end of 2015, and in five years, built it up to over 4,000 doors. I never would have uh, thought that. My goal was 1,000. I want to get to 1,000 doors. I thought, hey, if I could hit 1,000, um, I'd do it. That first year, I picked up 80, right? That was actually pretty good. That was one building, 80 units, um, but it wasn't anywhere where I needed to be in order to get me to 1,000, and I got to 5,000 or 4,000. I'm, I'm all at almost 5,000 now, but uh, it's been almost six years. So it's just be focused, right? Real estate's not an experiment. You know, it's going to work. You just got to stick with it and, uh, and give it the amount of time in order for you to kind of catch some momentum. So, um, and that's, that goes for any business venture, whether it's real estate or anything else that you do, make a commitment of five years. If you're not going to do it for five years, don't do it. Uh, so that, that would be one. Another would be the, you know, don't get married uh, to other business partners. Um, joint venture on a deal by deal basis, right? And, and if you do want to partner with somebody, really think about it, really sit down, talk about all the different things that could happen. Uh, you know, if anything ever happens to your business partner, do you want to be in business with their spouse? You know, would they be a good business partner? Or uh, do you need some sort of buyout clause if that happens? Do you need life insurance that buys out their position? Do you need like, what does it look like when times are good? What does it look like when times are bad? Like you've got to talk and have some of those difficult conversations to set proper expectations on the front end. Wow, wow, wow. That's definitely a whole lot. Um, so with this partnership, you know, learning from that partnership and not getting married, you, talk, you spoke about joint ventures on a deal by deal basis. Um, so how do you structure um, your partnerships on a deal by deal basis? You're like, yeah, so every different apartment building is its own LLC. So we create a new LLC for every deal. So if I'm going to go buy 123 Main Street apartment building, we're going to create 123 Main Street LLC. And that LLC is going to have its own operating agreement, which means you can change what equity percentage you have or what I have or what the investors have for every single deal. Uh, so it allows you to then get creative on whatever that deal is and however you want to break that, that deal up and however you want to partner with somebody. But if that partnership doesn't end up going well, then you just sell off that one property instead of all of your properties. Does that make sense? That, make, that definitely makes sense. 